now taking the broadcast of It's Time. With Reverend Nathaniel W. Martin. Here is Reverend Martin. Thank you, Dr. Blackwell. <clears throat> Let me say Hotep Havari Gurney to my Africana Studies uh, brethren and colleagues and teachers and professors and seekers of truth worldwide. And let me say uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, but certainly never good night and never ever goodbye because I always find good, I said I find goodbyes traumatizing. My name is the Reverend Nathaniel Wayne Martin. I'm the pastor of the New Life Institutional Baptist Church here in the city of Los Angeles and we are located at our 8916 South Main and we are being hosted by our sister church the Shiloh Missionary uh, Christian Church of which the Reverend Dr. Della F. Holliness is the proud pastor good friend of mine <clears throat> and we continue to pray for her uh, health and her recovery and for the ministry that she is endeavoring to preserve uh, there at the 8916 South Main Street location. And we ask, we invite you to come and join us and uh, worship with us uh, anytime you're in the area, or even if you're not in the area, you want to come. Welcome, welcome. We can find a spot for you. Just come on in and we're going to celebrate and continue to worship God in spirit and in truth. Uh, the offering which you are viewing, the presentation, is entitled It's Time, and it is a social justice uh, offering because uh, we do, do not live in a bubble and we cannot practice uh, Christianity uh, in a vacuum. We're going to have to be out here among each other and with each other, and uh, whether we are good or bad is, is not uh, uh, that salient of ma a fact. It's just a fact that can the world see Jesus in in you and can you practice uh, what you preach on Sundays or on uh, Wednesdays uh, the balance of of the uh, the week or of your life that's that's what the test is <clears throat> so you can't like I said you can't practice uh, Christianity in a bubble or in a vacuum uh, I want to shout out to my good friend the Reverend uh, Gully, who called me, I hadn't heard from him in a long time, and uh, we trust his health is continued to improve, and we want to encourage all of you uh, to study uh, history. Uh, I think it was Arthur Schomburg who told uh, the uh, late Dr. Uh, John Henry Clark that if you want to learn black history, you need to learn the uh, the white history and then we can come back and fill in the blanks and then you become to find out that uh, you can't really study uh, white history unless you study black history <laughs> and uh, the older I get the more I marvel at how uh, we have as it were been <clears throat> deleted or detracted from uh, the world uh, history stage. Uh, I can't uh, recall any of the early uh, movies on World War II where everybody was not, uh, as it were, of the uh, Caucasian race. You couldn't find a uh, black soldier, sailor, marine, coast guard person, artillery person. Uh, Air Force person, but yet uh, we fought the, the, the World War II. As they said, we had to fight the double V, double V victory, victory uh, against uh, fascism abroad and victory against racism uh, at home. And unfortunately for us, we did not uh, win all of the battles. The United States did not win it. We won the war on the battlefield, but we were still practicing the same uh, rate white supremacy here in the United States of America. It was routine, it was business as usual, uh, it was the uh, status quo, it was the 
It was so ordinary it was as not to be extraordinary uh, <clears throat> any longer. Even as we hear of the various uh, 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 murders or killings, or serial killings, serial murders, uh, where people go to schools or go to uh, supermarkets or places where people are gathered for a good time and then they in their demented uh, rage just bring their depression uh, in there and kill up a whole bunch of folks and then sometimes they kill themselves of course not always in the last uh, few person didn't kill himself and so we'll get a chance to figure out with this why did you go in there and kill those people and it should be a pretty interesting uh, uh, couple of uh, trials that we are going to be uh, witness to here in the United States of America. This is Black History Month, of course. Uh, today is the 17th, and uh, uh, Carter G. Woodson gave us a Black History Week originally, and now we have gotten it up to a, a month where we can concentrate on our our efforts and our experiences and our uh, life here as it has been lived in this country in this nation and uh, we need to uh, avail ourselves of all of the information that we can and not just uh, did you know who did that and who did no you need to know the whole compendium of, of black history, of black struggle. Because then you can see the beauty of uh, how God has blessed us and preserved us in this settler colonial uh, uh, system called the United States of America. It's been a settler colonial uh, power since the uh, pilgrims came here. Remember they slaughtered the uh, the Indians know that they didn't slaughter. They put in, they pinned them up in a reservation and took their land. And so we are, we are a post-genocide society. We have a horrible history behind us, and it is no wonder that people like DeSantis don't want to teach uh, that area of Black history because they say it's embarrassing. Uh, isn't that something? That you get em <laughs> <coughs> that you become embarrassed when we began to review the things that you have done that you said made you a great, and uh, things that you've done that said makes you an exception, exceptional, and uh, these type of thoughts and uh, uh, par paradigms and. Uh, we might call these a parallax because on the one end you got you slaughtered the people and took their land and then on the other end you claim you represent freedom and uh, it's like George Orwell's uh, word double think in 1984 uh, we are holding two con uh, contra two contradictory thoughts as true in our minds at the same time and uh, it's going to cause a nervous uh, breakdown in the country as, as it already has and is but uh, uh, we have to continue to pray for America because America is in a dangerous uh, condition that's where it kind of uh, blinded itself to its own faults and failures, which is the first lie. And uh, then the lie that they told in the Constitution, where they considered uh, God's people three-fifths three of a human being for the purpose of the counting. And then they said that there was a racial uh, difference when there really was no racial difference. No race does not occur in nature. Race does not occur uh, occur in 
in biology. Race is a social construct, and uh, which is not to say race is, is not effective as it has been uh, uh, practiced here all over, and really indeed all over the world. Uh, this doctrine of white supremacy uh, has really come a cropper in the uh, world of ideas, but yet it is a what? A false idea. It is only uh, preserved as we re as as we as a a a society uh, continue to voice it and to reinforce it. And minus our voicing it and our reinforcing it, there would be no racism uh, because of the fact that uh, all men, according to the Constitution, at least have are endowed by their, uh, uh, created with certain inalienable uh, rights, and uh, among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, it was that way before the United States was uh, established, 13 colonies. It was there long before uh, Greece or Rome uh, came on the scene. Uh, it was there way back in the antiquity of, of Africa when Egypt was actually a part of Africa and was acknowledged as a part of uh, Africa. And uh, when we uh, reckon truthfully uh, with the past and with our past and our share in that past, then we uh, <clears throat> will overcome a lot of these uh, points of view that, that really don't uh, jive with uh, reality. But they are philosophies espoused by uh, people who, whose utter thinking, whose utter aim was not to be objective in their uh, uh, recording of history but to foster a false narrative, which all of us have uh, read in our, our books, our history books, our geography books, uh, and the like, our scientific books for, for a long time. And it's only now, in the last uh, maybe 10, 15, 20 years, that uh, black scholars are going back into the the archives and unearthing the uh, true facts and the true history which uh, led the late Professor Derrick Bell to uh, opine that the uh, United States may not have been established to, for liberty's sake, it may have been established to maintain slavery because that's what it was founded on. 1619, those were 20 slaves, people enslaved, who had been uh, stolen away from their country and were sold over here in this country. And uh, in order to uh, diminish the, the criminal culpability of those who called themselves Christians, uh, they had to come up with a, uh, a a myth that the African was not fully human, and therefore he could, they could, he or he and she could be sold as as mere chattel, uh, as a, a property. In other words, that's what the Constitution uh, regarded us as. It took a civil war to move us from property to to a person, to people, and so uh, these. Uh, philosophies, these uh, ideologies had a deep impact on the, uh, the psyche of everybody here in the United States uh, <clears throat> on, the behalf, on the part of the African slaves, Africans who were enslaved, uh, they were told that they were inferior. And then on the part of the Europeans, they were told that they were superior. Superior in what? I don't know. <laughs> but, but let's uh, stick to the uh, 
uh, black history application that we are making uh, here at this time. And this virus, if we may call it a virus, this virus of racism, this, this uh, uh, pandemic of racism infected everything that we came in contact with, right? Uh, all of our interactions, all of our interrelations, uh, what 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 tinged and and colored by this uh, doctrine of white supremacy, and so as we came up on World War II, uh, in the uh, Pittsburgh Courier, a Mr. James Grant Thompson, who was a black man, Negro at that time. Uh, asked four different questions of the editor of the Pittsburgh Courier. I'm going to read them verbatim. You see me looking down. That's what I'm looking at. His first question was, should I sacrifice my life to live half American? Second question, will things be better for the next generation in the peace to, 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 to excuse me, <coughs> in the peace to follow <clears throat> would it be demanding too much to demand full citizenship rights in exchange for the sacrifice of my life is the kind of america i know worth defending and that those were the deep thoughts of many african american negroes as they were called of color at that time as the uh, uh, World War began to uh, make its voice heard. Uh, remember, Europe had been at war since uh, Hitler had invaded Poland, and uh, the white folks, the Germans, had come across the border into Poland and taken it, and uh, the Polish people were subjected. <clears throat> excuse me, subjected to the uh, Nazi way of uh, thinking. And uh, the Nazi way of thinking was that uh, the Nordic uh, supremacy and the economic suppression of the so-called lesser uh, races, as Herr Hitler himself uh, labeled them. Remember, Hitler was a racist, an arch racist, but then most of the United States was racist. And uh, what Hitler was doing, he was attacking and invading countries that were white, whereas the uh, European had invaded uh, the African continent of people who were not white, who were dark, and but he felt he was correct and justified in invading another man's country uh, simply because of, based upon the color of that man's skin. But Hitler is flipped the script. He's invading another white country. He's invading, he's, 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 he's antagonizing and threatening uh, to even uh, uh, take over in 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 Europe, in in rather in Britain and uh, in England, as is what you're, a word I'm trying to get to. And remember, uh, Britain at this at that time was uh, ruling all over that part of the world. It it had uh, conquered India. India was a co India was a colony. Uh, a lot of the uh, Caribbean nations were British colonies. Uh, Jamaica was a British colony. Uh, most of Barbados and all of those na uh, little islands out there that are still in existence were British colonies, British commonwealths. They were under the leadership or the tutorship or the supervision of the crown. In other words, they were colonies. And uh, but most of those nations were darker nations. Now, true, Ireland was not a darker nation, but the, the British 
didn't have didn't seem to have no compunction about uh, conquering Ireland and uh, Wales and Scotland and all of those places and putting them under the subjection to the crown. And so as World War II is beginning, uh, this is the world situation of, uh, as the uh, geographic or geopolitical situation was that the, uh, the uh, Germans were now uh, taken over and look as though they were going to wipe the British out. And uh, the British had to uh, get, make, make friends or continue their friendship uh, <clears throat> with the United States just in order to uh, survive. You know, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt had come into office on a uh, promise not to go to war, not to lead the United States into war. And yet, as soon as uh, the German threat arose, uh, Churchill began to ask uh, Roosevelt for lend lease, give us uh, <clears throat> weapons, give us arms, give us fuel, uh, logistics, so that we can fight this Führer, uh, because uh, he's going to he's going to take over the world. And uh, that's kind of ironic, coming from the British, who at that time had took over the world. And uh, so you can see, if you look at it from a black man's standpoint, how uh, ironic, what irony you, you're viewing. Uh, here you have a colonial power, the British, afraid of a, another a Germanic power, uh, the Germans under Hitler, who are now uh, challenging and threatening to overrun them. And uh, of course, I left something out too. That was uh, the fact that the Japanese uh, had risen and uh, they were taking uh, away British Empire. Uh, they took away Malaya and they took away Singapore and they took away Burma, and if they had not overstretched themselves in attacking uh, Pearl Harbor, they may have uh, conquered uh, for them, which, which would have been a great, uh, a, a great uh, accomplishment in uh, defeating the British. So the British were being attacked from two sides. They were being attacked from the Germans, the Germans were attacking them, and then they were being attacked from Japan, the Japanese were. Uh, attacking them. So uh, they needed to uh, get somebody to come help them uh, in this fight, in this war. And because they had to stop the spread of fascism, uh, which, which really was uh, American racism, because the fascists said they modeled all of their laws after the American law, after the American race, race laws. And so uh, it's re it is rather comical and ironic uh, when you consider the uh, things that were happening and the fears that were are being aroused in the uh, colonial powers that they might lose their colonial uh, power ability. All right. Now, uh, I'm going to quote Langston Hughes, who was a reporter for the uh, Baltimore, a paper in Baltimore, that had sent him in 1936 to cover uh, the Spanish War, which was where the Franco. Spain had aligned himself with the fascists, the Italians, who were aligned with Mussolini, who were aligned with, uh, with the German, Hitler. And uh, I'm going to read some of what uh, the thoughts that Langston Hughes said at that time. Langston Hughes says, the Negro recognized that the German Third Reich saw American race law as their model and that 
uh, Nazi ideology was not solely a foreign problem. Still quoting Langston Hughes, yes, we Negroes do not have to be told what fascism is in action. We know uh, its theories of Nordic supremacy and economic suppression have long been realities to us. If the swastika is the symbol of radical oppression abroad, the stars and stripes are equally so here at home. Keep in mind those questions that uh, the young man had written to the Pittsburgh Courier. Uh, should I sacrifice my life to live half American? Will things be better for the next generation for, of, in the peace to follow? And would it be demanding too much to demand full citizenship rights in exchange for the sacrifice of my life? All right, five minutes. Is this the kind, is the kind of America I know worth defending? All right. Now, now I'm telling you what the Negro was thinking in 1936 and into the 40s. We didn't go into the war with our eyes uh, closed. We knew what we were fighting for. That's why we called it the double victory. We had to try to get victory against fascism abroad and get victory against racism here at home. Remember, uh, the United States government promised uh, the those the, the Negroes who fought in the uh, uh, World War II that things would be better for them. But they did not get better after the war. Uh, the lynchings continued, con continued. Uh, over 12 uh, returning uh, Negro war veterans were hung. And uh, they couldn't wear their uniforms back in Mississippi because of the uh, racial hatred and racial animus and racial hostility uh, that that uh, was very very apparent, and very common. And so uh, uh, the U.S. did not achieve a full victory, although the Nazis were conquered on the battlefield. The racial ideals of white supremacy continued to flourish then and now. Uh, blacks recognized that the Nazis were taking a leaf out of America's Jim Crow practices. Remember, the Nazis studied America. When they told the Jews you're going to have to sit in the segregated railway car, they were imitating U.S. American policy uh, that was practiced against the American Negro right here in uh, America at that time. All right, now we're coming down to uh, the end of our program, and uh, I'm going to read a sociologist Kelly Miller, who was lived. In fact, he was a first black graduate of John Hopkins University. And he said the racial policy of the Hitler movement is strikingly similar to that of the Ku Klux Klanism of America. So that lets you know that uh, Hitler was not new. What he was doing was what he was seeing the white man do in America. And so but what the white man was doing in America was suppressing the black man. But what the German was doing was oppressing the, the white German and the, the, the white Polish and the white British. That's what he was trying to do. And, you know, uh, white folks don't like you to oppress white folks. They don't mind you oppressing black folks. <laughs> but, but they don't like it for you to oppress them. All right? And the thing about the Japanese was what? Here was a, a the what you call what the uh, Europeans term termed the yellow race attacking the uh, their white masters uh, and being successful at it because they almost uh, uh, crippled the U.S. Navy when they attacked Pearl uh, Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. However, when I was talking to you about Langston Hughes, he was uh, over in, uh, in Spain 
during the Spanish uh, Civil War, when the uh, because the the president of Spain, Franco, had sided with the Nazis and with Mussolini and the fascists and uh, the uh, Langston Hughes admitted or said if uh, the race war is to be won uh, where was that at okay if democracy is to be preserved in Europe it must first be preserved in Spain so that is our background of our black history uh, reading for a study for today and we didn't get very far but I pray that you will get into your uh, black history book and continue to study and because it would avail you so much if you uh, uh, look at things as they are all right and remember if you're working on a job right here and you know how things are and you know if hard work would have made you a millionaire, then every slave coming off the plantation would have been at least a millionaire. But hard work necessarily does not necessarily uh, equal freedom. Hard work does not necessarily equal leisure. Uh, the slave worked from can to cane. And he, he was poor when he went in there and he was poor when he come out. And so if you're working on a job, and they don't want to pay you, they don't want to treat you right, take my advice, don't work for them. Thank you, Doc. We out here. <laughs> Love you. God bless you, please. Keep up the good work, all right?